you're about to watch it, take the Hallmark episode. Mm, Thanks for, for doing that. Chances are the movie we're about to cover can be found on Philo. Yeah, Philo's where you find all of your TV movies, all your reality TV shows, your kids' shows. Philo's for everyone. It costs less than half of what YouTube and Hulu do. That's exactly right. You can get Philo for 25% off for two months by going to philo.tv slash DTH or click that little button. That one right there? Right over yonder. Right over there? Oh, my goodness. I think it's like above your head or oh, something. Really? I don't know. Here's here? the episode. Hey. This is a Bramble Jam podcast. Hi, I'm Bran, and I love When Calls the Heart Christmas specials. Hey, it's Panda. <laughs> I like When Calls the Heart Christmas specials. Is it this hard to lie every week, guys? It's so freeing to tell you that I'm Dan, and boy, howdy, do I despise When Calls the Heart Christmas specials. And this is the, the Deck, Deck the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Calls the heart. Hey, Christmas. hey. When calls the heart. Hey, hey. hey. What time is it? When calls, calls the heart. heart. Christmas. Special. This is the one before the one we jumped in on. This is, this is the special before the special that we watched in 2018. Yep. This is December 2016. I'm, pr But didn't we watch the one after season four? No, we watched oh. the one after Jack. So we got two more. We got one more after this one, and then it's us. Yeah. So then we're caught up. Then we're caught up. And I'm so... Caught up, got me feeling it. Caught up, I don't know what it is. When calls a heart, Christmas. Not bad. Thanks. Christmas. <laughs> this is the episode everybody waits for. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. This was a long boy, as we like to call yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calls the heart is either 40 minutes or an hour. The and long 20. boys hit different. The, the, they do. The long boy win calls the hearts just hit different. Like you train for the 5K, but then when you hit the marathon. You hit the, yeah. The, all um, that interval training of the 40 minutes, you just, uh, it just, it's a gone. It's evaporated. Yeah. yeah. Now, and you, yeah. It feels longer than the marathon. Like there are times, not all over all, but there are times yeah. where it feels like we've been sitting still longer than when, when we're during the, doing the marathon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, mm. that's, isn't that life? <laughs> yeah, it isn't is, you know? You guys just want to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get into it. Um, when Calls the Heart Christmas, uh, originally on December 25th, 2016, there are 2016 there were people. Was it literally just called Christmas? It was just called A Wind Calls a Heart Christmas. Heart Christmas. Yeah. Awesome. There were people that spent Christmas nights crowded around the TV. Watching Wind Calls the Heart. Yeah. Oh, man, that, that is a life to live right there. Yeah, it is. Hit me with that synopsis, big boy. Let's go. Let's it here, it. December Bring 25th, the big guns. 2016, a little something like this. Yeah. When calls the heart, Christmas move A. Who are you? Big Dave. <laughs> big Dave? Big Dave. Are you a big fan of this one? Oh, big fan. Did big you Dave's a big fan. Did you watch it Christmas Day 2016? Christmas Day 2016. And the day after, Feast of Stephen. <laughs> And then the day after, most because people don't think it's Stephen. <laughs> it is. He was a martyr in the Bible. That means he was killed. Big Dave. Wow. Does Stephen love feast? Was he a big? Foodie? I love Big Stephen. I don't know about Stephen. I know he got killed. Yeah, but why do I we... love when calls the heart movies on Christmas Day and on the feast of Stephen? Big Dave. All right, Big Dave. <laughs> big Dave out. It's Christmas and hope. You Valley. don't tell Big Dave when to leave. Big Dave tells you when to leave. You big Dave. <laughs> big Dave. All right, Big Dave. <laughs> big Dave, are I you like out? Him. Dave, you out? Big Dave out. Nailed it. That's how you mute somebody right there, everybody. <laughs> That's how it's done. It's Christmas in Hope Valley, and Elizabeth is hard at work helping to get the town ready. Uh, Rosemary and Lee return from their honeymoon, and Rosemary says she's going to be too busy to lead the Christmas committee this year. And Elizabeth's like, well, I've already been doing it. And Rosemary throws, throws some shade and says, well, that explains the sad tree in the center of the square. All right, Rosemary. Uh, at school, the students prepare to put on the nativity play, which will be followed by a banquet. Duh. Uh, we find out that Gowan is uh, not, he is alive, but he's not doing great. He also cannot act as mayor, and he's still under federal investigation. 
So Abigail is going to take over, and he is not pleased when he hears this news. A peddler comes into town. His name's Mr. Sam. And uh, he comes to town, delights kiddos with his wagon full of trinkets. And he has a puppy named Dasher with his jingle bells on. He's great. Uh, there's a good chance that he's magic because he just has everything that anybody needs. But I will report back later. Uh, Bill recognizes him as a former thief. Um, though the elderly peddler says, those days are behind me, good sir. Uh, Rosemary and Lee's home are, is all decorated for Christmas, and she's like, oh, I'm just getting started. Um, Elizabeth's home uh, is also getting ready for Christmas, and she invites Faith to be a part of the Hope Valley Christmas Committee. Elizabeth and Faith, they're just really getting together, and I love that. Mm -hmm. Lee enters the saloon one day and tells Jack that he thinks that the Christmas pa uh, uh, present that he bought for Rosemary was stolen. The gift was a spider pin which was apparently back in the day cool. Uh, Jack says, I'll look into it. Jack tells Elizabeth outside the saloon that he's nervous about the Mounty Christmas ball because he can't dance. Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, hey, I'll teach you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sam Bailey over there pulls out a music box and uh, cranks it up. They start dancing, and Jack's like, I like this already. And then Elizabeth's like, you're not even paying attention. He's Jack like, oh. Forrest Gump. He's like, he's like, yeah. I'm, I like this already. Oh, he says, oh, well, I'm paying attention. And then they kiss. As Jack uh, talks to um, uh, s uh, some people, he notices Sorry that the, that, that one of the ladies is wearing the stolen spider pin. So he says, hey, can I uh, take take this? So he takes it and he brings it over to Mr. Bailey and he's like, oh, I don't know what, I don't know who I bought this from, whatever. And he's like, hey, it's stolen, so I'm going to arrest you. And Mr. Bailey's like, no problemo. Not a big deal. It's not the first time I've spent time in, in, in the clink. In jail. We're back in the saloon, and Gowan does not want Abigail's help with anything. He accuses her of just trying to be nice so that she feels good about herself and so that she can say that if, you know feels morally superior to everybody else. Get out of here. Don't want your help. Rosemary tells Jack the truth about the spider pen. When she was searching for the gift that ja uh, that Lee got her, she found it, didn't like it, so instead gave it to Mr. Bailey, and he sold it. Jack tells Rosemary to take the gift back and pretend that she didn't know anything and act surprised. She says, okay, thank you, Mountie, for that <laughs> solid advice. <laughs> Mr. Bailey peddles a Bible that Frank used to have. It used to be his. He just has everybody's stuff in his wagon. <laughs> Uh, Lee and Jack are I think working. the end of the movie is going to explain it, though. Don't yeah. worry. Well, Lee and Jack are working on fixing a house, and uh, they're nearly killed by a falling beam, but luckily Jack pushed him out of the way. Uh, taking, uh, 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 sorry, Abigail talks to Gowan again and is like, hey, you are back in Hope Valley because it's your home. This is your home. Sure, you've killed people, but this is your home. And she offers them a chance to start over. It's time for the big nativity play, and guess who shows up? It's Gowan, because he's home. The peddler lets, lets Cody keep his dog. Then Elizabeth finds an uh, invitation to the saloon. She dresses up in a gown, and it's uh, a little a little uh, faux Mountie Christmas ball, because they couldn't make it because of yeah. the snow. Yeah, says. of course. Yeah. Uh, and Jack and Elizabeth dance together. At the end of this episode, a movie, uh, the peddler, Mr. Sam Bailey, um, takes a baseball that was given to him by Cody. He then throws that up into the air and it turns into a <laughs> firework. That firework then turns into snow. White Christmas. And that, my friends, was Win Calls a Hard Christmas. We did it. We did do it. Oh, boy. As they say in the what are they Venerable say? Expendables 3, lots to digest. Lots. To digest. Let's take a quick. Let's take a quick second to do that, and we'll come back and we'll break. We're going to digest. Down. We're going to digest during the break. Okay. No, you don't think so? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then we'll come back ready to share yeah. what we okay. digested After, to eliminate. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong, buddy? I'm sick of this. What are you sick of? I'm sick of just trying to figure out. Uh, what's on this one? What's over there? How do I watch that? What's YouTube? Like, I just can't handle it anymore. You're talking about TV? Yes. <laughs> do you want all your favorite channels? Of course I do. What the am I? The thing is, is, is that it's going to... It, what? It's going to cost 
hundreds of dollars to get all your favorite channels. Like, That's my whole thing. Yeah. I just can't handle that. And then the, you had a DVR and, and you, you lose your stuff. Plus, my cable keeps frying my TV. <laughs> Dude, if I've heard once, I've heard that. Have you ever heard YouTube TV tell you they they won't fry your TV? I've never heard him say that. <laughs> Is there anybody who will say that? Yeah, Philo who will go on the record. Philo will and say, say they won't fry Philo your TV. Philo will say we won't fry your TV. That's the Philo difference. Do you get over sixty channels? Yes. Do you get unlimited DVR for a year? Yes. Do you get all of this for twenty five bucks a month? Yes. But you get the rubber stamp, Megan stamp, guarantee, Philo won't fry your TV, and you get 25% off of Deck the Hallmark. Take my, wait, what? I was going to say take my money, but it doesn't sound like you need it. Yeah, it's good enough as is, but if you go to philo.tv slash DTH, you can get an unfried TV and a great TV experience, plus 25% off for two months. Philo's for everyone, and they won't fry your TV. Thanks for, thanks for explaining it, mister. (laughs) So in that last ad, were you supposed to be like a child? I think so. It was. I was on the fence about it. I couldn't <laughs> figure out. We all were. I wasn't sure how to commit to that bit. Yeah. Uh, but again, the TV's getting fried, fried man. Um, let's talk about something very simple, and it's this. When Calls the Heart Christmas 2016. Okay. Uh, we're going to break it down. I believe we're going to do it with four segments today. We got an email uh, from Tim Legger. Tim Legler, the NBA no. analyst? No, Tim Legger. Tim Legger. Tim L-E-G-G-E-R. Tim Legger yeah. at ESPN.com, <laughs> which is weird. <laughs> and he said, hey, guys, I love your one calls the heart episodes. Uh, if you could add a fifth segment to make it longer, that'd be great. I think that's what everybody wants. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, signed Tim. Tim, yes, you not only do we have the four segments, we throw in Smolder and Pocket Watch and What's Calling My Heart every week. There's like seven segments. It's our most uh, complex. Conv- convoluted episode each week. I got oh, another email from Tim. Tim said, hey, Dan, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Is what he I, listening live? I think so. I think he might be a double In the Decker. Facebook group? I'm not sure. RambleJamPlus.com? He might have snuck in Wow. There. He said, hey, Dan, I, th- I knew you were going to say that. Uh, what I'm asking for is a fifth well-rounded and defined. Songs. Oh, so the the three segments that Sign we add aren't well rounded. What what else could we possibly do with this meaningless television show? It's ridiculous. Uh, Tim sent another email. He hey, has hey, got a fast <laughs> typing finger. Hey, hey, Dan, I'm glad that you asked. I have an idea for a fifth segment. It's where you guys all rank the Sarah Michelle Geller movies from start to finish. Every week we rank all of the Sarah Michelle Geller movies. Every week you rank the Sarah Michelle Geller movies and you see if anything changes. Okay. That would mean we'd have to watch them, right? Or we just how we're feeling. Signed, Tim. PSU Sign. No, I love that. We'll That's see good. what we can do. That's really good. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> guys, let's break this movie down. Let's start with a hot take. Uh, Panda, yeah. new season, new Christmas, mm-hmm. new you. How do you feel about this one? So. I think there's two ways you can evaluate this episode. First of all, you can evaluate and compare it next to other Christmas movies. And when you do that, this movie next to a standard Hallmark Christmas movie does not hold up. It's not very good. Uh, It's slow. It's plotting. There's really nothing that happens. The entirety of this show hinges upon you watching the other episodes. But even then, even if you haven't watched any of them, it's still a slow, plotting, boring uh, movie. So from a movie standpoint, compared to other Christmas movies, it's not very good. However, when you take this episode and you compare it next to uh, the other episodes of When Calls the Heart, it's still not very good and very boring <laughs> and plotting, and it is excruciating. It's just two boring, excruciating episodes crammed Together. into one yeah. uh, to make the worst Oreo you've ever had in your entire life. Uh, a When Calls the Heart Oreo of doom a and despair. A When Calls the heart That's good. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Um, And so, yeah, there's a couple good scenes. That's about it. (laughs) This This is what I'll say. The peddler is the best thing to ever happen to Winkle's Dart. He's the best character. Everything about him is fantastic. And somehow, with an hour and 25 minutes to kill, we don't get nearly (laughs) enough peddler. You get like maybe 20 minutes of peddler. We barely get peddlered. And that's a disappointment because he's the best thing to ever happen to this program. So the peddler elevated everything uh, past where it belonged, and the rest of it brought it back down. Um, and so, and you know what is disappointing is I think this is the end of the peddler. 
It is the end of the peddler. And I will echo the sound of your echo echoing the sound of his echo, which is this, is the pet. Here's how bad things are when calls the heart. The peddler is the best character in when calls yep. the heart history. Hands down. It's not even close. And to kind of contradict what you're saying, but not really. If you, if we had watched this movie during a season of when calls of, of deck to Hallmark, having not seen when calls the heart, we would have said the same thing. Yes. As we're saying with all of the for sure ca back catalog that we've seen, like there is 20 minutes and he gets three scenes that are dynamite good scenes and it is just completely drowned out amidst a sea of boring white people doing absolutely nothing. They're doing nothing. They're saying nothing. It's meaningless. And then you get this one character who shows up and turns a baseball into fireworks that turn into snow. And that is the only reason that this exists. And somehow that makes it worse to me because instead of 42 minutes, I got 60 minutes of things that I didn't care about. And that's being generous. The peddler gets maybe 20 minutes in this. Yeah, maybe. 25 maybe. And it is just astounding how abominable the rest of this is. And I can't imagine things getting better, but I also can't imagine them getting worse. There's only two things I will say in in any sort of defense of this episode. Number one, we have movement on the front of uh, the switch in mayor. Abigail is be going to become mayor. That's yeah. the first, that's the big plot movement here. Yes. Uh, and Gowan's character is... It, it oh makes no gosh. sense. It makes no sense. But we have movement within his character in, in some sense. It makes no sense, and it's not good. Oh, but I have just, so many questions about what Gowan is. Just, but this episode this episode is just... What, what's sad to me, though, is when I compare it to the other When Calls the Heart episodes or uh, Christmas movies we've seen, it might be the best one it we've seen the of the one. Chris one. Uh, just Christmas because one. you get 20 minutes of The Peddler. I, the Peddler is that good, but also uh, I, I think I have this one, one, and then Elizabeth giving birth two because of just the drama behind that, and then The Orphan one, three. Well, we saw one, like we've seen another one before this one. There's an hour and a half boy to start season three. No, I'm talking Christmas, just the Christmas ones. Just the Christmas ones. Yeah, Orphans, oh, Dead Last. The Orphans and the, the Potluck is the worst one. I think The Orphans is better than The Potluck. I don't know. Her giving birth and oh, the drama I don't behind know. that was pretty... I don't... They're so bad. But that moves the plot forward of yeah, her giving birth. I guess. I don't know. That's but bad. the potluck. The potluck. I mean, this come is, on. This is... We'll talk about it. Woof. Well, let's talk about it more right now. Okay. Let's talk about feels. 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 Panda? Yeah. Uh, the, the peddler is obviously a great one, but the, the one scene I actually think is well done is Jack and Elizabeth uh, dancing... Any, the two times they dance, when they practice the waltz, first of all, and he looks dead yeah. at her, and uh, she goes, you're not paying attention, and he goes something along the lines of, uh, I'm completely paying yeah. attention, or oh, something I, like I that. I sure am. I sure am, or something like that. It's it's yeah. great. And then, when she shows up in her dress, dress is beautiful, she, uh, he comes on out for the Mountie Ball. You love the, a dress. The, no one, you love a good dress. I love a good dress. Every time you see a good dress, you're like, that's a good That's dress. a great dress. Absolutely. Uh, and when they come out, it's a beautiful setup. Uh, candles everywhere. It's beautiful. They dance. Love that scene. Gave me feels. I thought that was great. How many candles, if you walk into a room and you see a bunch of candles, how many candles can be lit before you start to feel a little uneasy? I was a little uneasy in that scene. I was that's, uneasy that, in that, that scene. Uneasy. way too many candles. Yeah. I think, I think once you start getting to double digits, it's uh, I agree little 100. Wearing. I was going to say 10. Yeah. Yeah, there were 20 plus oh, there. Oh, plus. easy. Yeah. I was a little. Uh, it's reckless. Yeah. Not okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I've said it uh, before that every scene that uh, Jack and Elizabeth are doing their thing, Jack and Elizabeth stuff, is just at another level. And I don't. I, it, the biggest crime against humanity is how little we get to see these two just be romantic with each other in this series. And it might be why Jack dies. <laughs> So like Jack dies. <laughs> How the, dare you, sir? He, he he. It's just like I there. I care. I just care about them so much, I'm and I get so little of day. it. So that when I do get it, I'm like, man, boy, that was hot. another day, another <sighs> day. How is this happening? <laughs> it's not my time to go. 
So I love them. Yes, I yeah. agree. I echo. So this show is so bad that the cheesy stuff that normally is the bottom of the barrel for like Hallmark movies works incredibly well in yeah. this show because of how bad everything else is. And that is true about the peddler scenes. Like if the peddler scenes were in a Hallmark Christmas movie, I'm not sure we'd be raving about them like we are right now. But when he hands Pastor Sam or when Sam Bailey hands the pastor the Bible. Oh, that's great. It's a great scene. When Cody sees the doll and trades his prize possession baseball for that doll in a completely selfless act, um, great scene. Great scene. Um, those both of those scenes really worked and, and I was I like I was shocked at how well they worked on me because I was thinking if this happens in a Hallmark Christmas movie it's just run of the mill bad but in this show it's just high art do you feel like it's also because we do know the characters a little bit though that we care like Cody's gone through a lot and maybe like maybe it is wearing down no, on us like I, maybe we are caving no I think it's it just goes to show you that the best character in the history of the show shows up for 20 minutes in one episode and will never be seen again after four, after three seasons. That should tell you everything you need to know about the how we feel about the characters. That's fair. That's fair. Um, it, it's time for another break. Yeah, we'll come back with yeah. the wait what's and uh, other things, hopes and values and whatnot here. I don't know. Welcome back, everybody. Yay. Welcome back. We're talking about the way what's mm -hmm. here on uh, Deck the Hallmark, talking about Wink Calls to Heart Christmas 2016. Panda, wait, what? Yeah, there's there's a couple. Uh, first of all, we had an entire conversation about paprika. Um, that does involve the peddler. He's in there, and somehow he, he can't even pull that scene out. Yeah. I mean, th that was it was unbelievable. And to be fair, there's nothing that is immediately out of place or for us to say, wait, what? It's just... This is what we did to fill 85 minutes. Yeah, that we was have part a of a scene where we talk about paprika and shepherd's pie. Like yeah. I it was just I couldn't believe that it was that long of a scene too. Like Man. I give you 30 seconds. They talk about shepherd's pie on Wind Calls the Heart a lot more than anyone talks about anything. It's one of my least favorite <laughs> meals of all time. Oh my yeah, goodness. I, it's fine. I get a little twitchy every time I hear oh, it. Oh my gosh, it's just, it's a lot. I mean, is that all, all they had in 1911? Was it like every meal was shepherd's pie? I just, I don't understand. Uh, baby Jesus. <laughs> What's your first thing you say up there in your notes? It just oh, says, it's, it's banquet time. It's says, banquet it's time banquet again. Time. It's just banquet time. <laughs> <laughs> It's banquet time. It's banquet time. Uh, banquet time. Why'd you, you write it down? Banquet of mine. Just, just, because I had to write something, and I, as I'm watching it, like, it's banquet time. I, it's, this is what they do every Christmas. Like, I, are you the person that can't, can't get rolling on notes until you have something written down? Is yeah. that who you oh, are? Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's banquet time. It's banquet, yeah, banquet yeah. time. I'll start here. Uh, here we go. Banquet time. But it's they banquet. do it every, I mean, it, it, that tells you, that should tell you everything you need to know about the Christmas episodes. Banquet time. It's banquet time. Yep. Hot luck. Uh, baby Jesus is terrifying. Uh, yeah. the baby Jesus is yeah. straight out of a horror movie. Um, creepy little doll. Uh, and then it's a wait what, but it's also wonderful at the same time. Sam, the snowball, the baseball. Yeah. I don't understand Holy it. Holy cow. He, I don't understand it. He takes a baseball. That's autographed. That's autographed. Yeah, it is the prize <laughs> possession of a seven or eight year old. It's all he cares about in life, and he trades it away and he to make a girl happy. He throws it in the air, and it becomes a firework. And, and as that firework fall. starts to fall down, it turns into snow, yeah. which gives snow to Hope Valley. Yeah. Yeah, it is one of the weirder scenes. We all know he's magic. Like, who is watching that and with five minutes left goes, this Sam Bailey just seems to have everything that everybody needs by accident. Like, everyone knows he's magic, but they're like, no, we got to hammer this home. How do we make sure everybody knows this guy's magic? What if he disappears? No, no, no. People will make up an excuse. He, Tony, Tony in the writer's room. I was no, like, no, guys, no. I got it. I mean, I've, I've been chewing on this idea for a while. I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> what if he flies? Well, throw, what if he flies? Uh, what about the base? You guys remember the yeah, baseball? Does he give it back to Cody? Because Cody loved that thing more than anything else. No, that's not what I had in mind. Okay. He throws it. In the air. In the air. And Cody catches it out of nowhere. No. He throws it in the air and it becomes a firework. It explodes into fireworks. Into be it becomes a firework. Okay, so it's a firework show on Christmas Day. That's weird. No, because that <sighs> firework then turns into snow. Oh, dear gracious. 
I, I just, I don't know where. I love it. I, I say we print it. I, Bill? I, Bill, you in? Oh, uh, Bill's in. <laughs> Can we get Jessica Lowndes in there? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No? I love okay. it. Uh, yeah, that, that scene's bonkers, Nunu. There's no way around it. Wild. Wild. It's banquet time. <laughs> banquet time, <laughs> banquet time <laughs> baby. baby. It's banquet time. Banquet time. Yeah. Dude, I love a good banquet, though. Do you really? Well, or are you just saying that. No, because think about it. Somebody the, invites you to a banquet. You're like, man, how do I? If get I don't out have to dress up, you're still like, how do I get out of this? It depends on what they're having. Yeah, Twenty okay. people, long table, people from work, church, and and home all coming. You got to go. It's an evening. It's potluck. You hate a banquet. Just stop it. You know you hate it. It's banquet. Time. Is it all you can eat? Like where you can, you, like they have enough where I'm able to get multiple portions. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, then I'm I'm, I'm potentially in. Liar. <laughs> no, I think I tell you what. You host a banquet. I don't want to host a banquet because I'm being honest. I don't like them. Well, if it was a wing banquet. No, now see now we're at a different conversation. That's not what's going on. That's not what's going on. When wing calls the heart. That's not what I was talking about. That's not what a banquet is. Nobody has a wing banquet. If you and I want to throw a wing banquet and just have a bunch of different kinds of wings, I'm in for that. I guarantee we wouldn't call it a banquet though. I, I'm going to do it. You're going to throw a wing banquet. I'm going to throw I'll a wing banquet. There. I'll be there. Okay. It's a black black tie occasion. You just said you only like it when you don't have to dress up. Well, I'm making. He, yeah, uh, he's but just we're calling gonna, shots. It's my banquet. I can do what I want to. I have it's a my banquet. I can do what I want to. Do what I want it's to. It's banquet time. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few things, guys. One, uh, Lee, who uh, is in charge of building things for a living, oh, boy. somehow when he's nailing something in, doesn't hear the um, whole structure uh, falling. The whole structure <laughs> falling. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. The old, thunderous old, sound old of the Jack roof needs to in. push him over. I just Man. I didn't uh, understand. Talk about an unnecessary scene. I don't understand the point of the scene. Yeah, because they're building the houses for the tent people. Yeah, and it's just to throw a little action adventure in there. I, I guess. love that we call it the tent people. It's. I mean, they're, they're not humans. Tents. They're tent people. <laughs> <laughs> they're cannibals. Still, uh, this episode, this movie. Um, Contains the weirdest version of Away in a Manger I've ever. ever heard. Ever. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. It's like it's we, like I what who it li it's like we convinced Tracy that there were copyright like yeah. claims <laughs> on Away in a Manger. Right. And she had to come up with a different rendition of it on the spot. It was very odd. It was very odd. And last, and maybe I missed it. Maybe I missed it. But early on in the episode, Bill, who apparently has arrested everybody at some point in time, says, hey, I know uh, the peddler. I arrested him once uh, for uh, thievery. And he goes and he talks to him. And he's like, those days are behind me. The peddler does. The peddler says it? The peddler says it. The, this Boy. happens so early on. And so it gives me a lot of questions because I'm playing Mad Libs out here. They, <laughs> they don't know what's happening from scene to scene. What happens in minute 15 has no bearing on what happens in minute 62. Like it just does. My theory on this is that he was, and then he, he became a changed person, and now he's an angel. Well, later he <laughs> tries to give. Now he's an angel. But hear me out. Later he tries to give the pastor. This elixir that is moonshine. Because after the pastor walks away, he takes a quick slug. He, he gives a quick boy. And you're like, wait. Like, there are two or three scenes where you're like, is Sam the devil? Because he's like, what is happening? And, and, then he, and then he comes back around and he's like, no, no, no. Here's the Bible that you needed from your jail cell. What yeah, is Sam? Angels, is angels like a good drink from time they to time. They do. They love a good shine. You know what I mean? <laughs> Angels of Filthy Souls, man. I don't understand. Dude, he, they really say that? They one say that. Keep it's a conversation. The the way, okay, it's meaningless. Filthy Sam's character is meaningless. Yeah. Yeah. Sam was a real person. He is a traveling a peddler with the ability to create fireworks snow of baseballs. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best character in the history what's of television. Hard, what's hard to understand about that? Just I don't understand. He sleeps under his carriage unless he's lucky enough to get a jail cell. That's right. I just don't understand. Yeah, uh, he is something. Uh, Dan? So let me get this straight. Elizabeth is doing a play, a Christmas play. And she says, because everybody wants to be like Mary and Joseph and everything. And she says, there won't be any auditions. Instead, the biggest parts will go to the kindest people. Now, a couple of things. First of all, 
that is an audition. And second of all, it is a surefire way to make your play worse. Um, <laughs> because typically those that are going to be the most talented and want it the most are not going to worry about being kind. And I'm not saying that people that act are unkind. I'm just saying that if you're telling a bunch of eight-year-olds that whoever is the kindest gets to be the lead, your play is going to suffer. It just is. And that is an audition. It is. To say there's no auditions and then to tell them there's a kindness contest is a lie. That is an audition, period, end of sentence, no way around that. Um, when did Gallon become under a federal investigation? When did it happen? Because Bill Avery has no jurisdiction or power with anyone. He does not work as a detective anymore. He does not work as a Mountie anymore. He does not work as a constable anymore. He's not affiliated with any official government anything. So how does he know that? Like, when did that happen? And speaking of Gowan, what is Gowan? Is he doing a full Tiny Tim here? Like, could he be acting more than, than any other scene? And we're really trying to make him, like, try to make people feel bad about him. And we have tried to go in full circle to the point where we're like so happy where the murderer of 40 men shows up to an event. Don't get that. My biggest one, I think, though, well, I have two, I have two more. Uh, one, where they decide the roads are closed, so all the gifts that are supposed to come from Hamilton don't come. Right. And they're all stuck in town, and they all have this big meeting, and they say, hey, if we pull together, we can get all this done. We can decorate the saloon for the Christmas play. Uh, we can uh, build the houses, we can get the gifts, we can build the gifts, blah, blah, blah. And they have this montage where they're all working. Where are all the children? Who has the children? Who's keeping the children? Someone has to be looking after these people, and no one's doing it, and it's a little bit disconcerting, first of all. Do yeah, you, no, that's fair. Yeah, right? And then lastly, is Jack out $10? Yes, he's out 10 bucks. He's out 10 bucks, which in 1910 is a good chunk of change he pays sam the angel demon whatever thief ten dollars for the spider brooch to give it back to lee no he pays the woman ten dollars yes he never gets that money back mm -mm. he never he doesn't ever recoup his ten dollars he just is out ten bucks he's a good dude which he's is a, a lot of money that's a lot of money he yeah. just is out ten how much money do you think that was back then 500 bucks um, probably somewhere in between 100 but, and 500. But think about this again is the long game of Sam, and he's brilliant because w once uh, Jack comes to him and he's like, "Hey, we figured out it was Rosemary. Why didn't you just tell me?" And he says, "Because I wanted her to learn a lesson." This is a long game. She came to him. He bought it from her. Sold it to her, the other lady. He made that money. La he made money off of that. Plus, jacks out ten dollars. He's How a demon. How is that a long? Yeah, that's not a long game of an angel. It's it's, it's just, a long game of a con artist. Yeah. Well, he just wanted someone to learn a lesson, and also and he did. wanted to win some money in the process. <laughs> uh, guys, it's uh, hopes and valleys, things that gave us hope for the future or uh, bummed us out. Uh, Panda. Uh, here's what bummed me out: no proposal. Uh, I called it being real early in the season. It's still not give over. Give us a it's little trickery, be. boy. You said it was going to happen first episode. I did. I said I... I Ten I, bucks worth $286 today. That's yeah. Why wow. Ten yeah. bucks. That's bold. <laughs> uh, so I will say uh, definitely... But you know what? You know, this uh, you know, is a, a kind of its own <laughs> standalone thing, and so it could happen next episode. Yeah, it could. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, hope... Um, hey, you know what? I want to see redemption for Gowan. I'm going to go all in on Gowan wow. and say he's my hope every episode. Wow. Just because he's my valley? Counteract. Just, just to spice it up. I don't. I, I want to be very clear that my valley with Gowan has nothing to do with the fact that you can't redeem the character. He is a murderer, and he's not been held to any sort of punitive like consequence for him murdering uh, basically uh, town genocide right so can you be redeemed yeah but not without any consequences if you, you don't to go think down, his whole life right now is a consequence he, uh he's not been if you if someone murdered 40 people and knew it and the town knew it for him not to have some sort of punitive consequence that's not just god striking him and getting him in a car accident which is dumb 
that like I'm all for people being redeemed. Like I'm I'm big on character redemption. I don't know. But you can't you can't just make him a good guy because it serves your plot without the needed steps. And this show has no desire to go through the steps, and we know that. And so that's your hope, and that's your That's valley. my valley. Exactly right. Um, my hope is that uh, uh, Sam gets his own documentary. He's not, I, I, you, I'd you, love we're to gonna see, make it? I, yeah, I think we're going to make it. We're going to put in the work. Uh, the guy's an, just amazing, and so I'd like to see more of him. My valley is I don't think it's going to get funded. Um, but who can tell? Yeah. Pocket Watch? No, no, I think he's gone. I think he's gone for good. Gone, you yeah. want to retire the watch? No. No, you can't retire You never, him. no, because just when you sleep, that's when the watch shows up. <laughs> that's when the watch shows up. <laughs> it's like a thief, thief in the night. Thief in the night, baby. Um, and then a smolder. Smolder? All right, this is my highest smolder, I think, ever, because he brings it this episode. He, so Boy, his first, he does. Uh, first scene out of the gate, Woo! he is tan. He's, I got, I mean, he, he's tan. Yeah. He is just looking he's right. looking good. But he also just brings the smolder with Elizabeth all yes, episode. All episode. Um, I'm gonna go nine point one. This is yeah. like the nine most, one. This is the most fun. He he's seems having. To, he's That's having. Right. He's having, seems to be having fun. He's enjoying it. He Since looks great. One, yeah. I'm I also. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go um, nine point five plus. I'm using my cream. You can't use a cream. You're out of creams. Uh, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm with Brand on this one. I'm gonna go uh, nine point five. I too am gonna use my cream. You don't have one left. To cream use. Brothers. Um, we're about to get to the what's called my about heart. Cream Brothers. Uh, but before we do, of course, we have to uh, do our Sarah Michelle Geller. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Order, we're and we're going to start with her first three commercials. We have Burger King commercial number one with Sarah Michelle Gellar. I thought it was just her movie. Yeah, yeah, the, well, it. we've broadened it. Um, no, it's just her movie. It's. I don't know what to tell you. This is the list he sent me. <laughs> he sent me the list. Tim I, Legger sent you the list of, of Sarah how, Michelle Gellar. Of Geller. how he wants this to be split up. So Why this are week, we doing this for one thing? This week, I don't know. It's what he wanted. This week, he just wanted the commercials. Okay. Burger King commercial number one. Burger King commercial number two, and Burger King commercial number three, which came uh, in uh, 1982 and was a Christmas commercial with Leah Thompson. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to go in that order. Burger King one, you think, is her best. Yes, and then two, and then three. You think the Christmas commercial with Leah Thompson is the worst? Too much. One? Too much, Burger King. I disagree. Uh, and here's why. I think when you really watch her arc, uh, the three is, three is clearly her best one. Uh, two, really solid. One, beginner's luck. Three one two, okay. Three one two. See the second one, I felt like was just a not like just like what like we've already done this. Yes, yeah. I can think of maybe four Sarah Michelle Gellar movies total. Legit. And total. all of them are Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, the two Grudge movies, and the first Cruel Intentions. Well, over the she's course of the two. next, she's in Scream Two. Mm -hmm. And I know what you did last summer. I know what you did last summer. That's well, right, Jennifer Love. Over, over Buffy. the course of the next year and well, a half, Buffy's the show. She's not in the movie, is she? Yeah, I think she is. Is she in the movie? Uh, over the course of the next year and a half, we will get through all of these. Oh my gosh, Tim Legger's the worst. I don't know what to tell you, um, Dan. Who do we have today for what's calling my heart? What's calling my heart? Email us hello at deckthehallmark.com and tell us what's calling your heart. Jessica Trinidad, dear Bran, Pan and Pan, Pan, Pan and Danda. Bran, Pan, and Dana, that's where we are this week. Dear Bran, Dan, and Panda, my love of Hallmark movies has lasted over 10 years. In recent years, I've made social media posts about this, including my love of making fun of said movies. Much to my great delight and surprise, my family and friends have enjoyed my post and have even reached out to me with more Hallmark movie info, a gift of a Hallmark movie t-shirt, and a link to you guys. What's calling my heart is that, they is that my loved ones have fun with my little joy. I am the sixth of seven kids, a school teacher, and a mom of four. Ergo, ooh, nice use of ergo. Mm -hmm. I am deeply delighted when others notice me and know my quirks. In gratitude for the gift of your awesome podcast, I've attached here my Hallmark Christmas movie checklist. I've also included my filled-in checklist for crashing through the snow. I cannot make it a drinking game because I can't afford a repeated ER bill for alcohol poisoning. <laughs> I have fun using this as a movie review format, and I am totally delighted at my loved one's responses to my post. Cheers and keep doing God's work, my friends. Sincerely, Jessica Trinidad. Oh, so nice. Jessica, God bless Thank you. Thank you, you so Jessica. Much. Really very kind. Yeah. You can email us your hearts uh, at uh, hello at dickdahlmark.com. Hello at dickdahlmark.com. We're at tomorrow with our, our very last 
movie for Christmas in July. That's right. And you hate to see that, but the good news is we'll be back on Monday and Friday. Finishing uh, strong. With, with more Christmas. So Finishing strong, though. Yeah. Luke McFarlane, Nikki DeLoach, Christmas Land. Christmas Land. Come on. That's exactly right. Can't Great. wait for it. Until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmarks of Bramble Jam podcast. It's presented by Philo TV. It's produced by Brandon Gray and recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. Set decor is by Plum at Haywood Mall. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. For more information on Bramble Jam podcast network, you can go to bramblejampodcast.com.